Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Monumental. Monumental is brought to you by Fun Forge. It's for one to four players, ages 14 and up, and games range anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes. In Monumental, you'll develop your civilization by constructing buildings and wonders within your cities, learning all kinds of news, scientific knowledge, and cultural development, and of course, bringing your military might to bear in order to take over other provinces. In the end, the civilization with the most points will win the day. Now, it's important to note, there are two versions of this game. You have the core box, which is gonna have um, tokens that represent your different characters, your warlords and troops throughout the game. And there's the deluxe version where you'll get these beautiful, oh my gosh, these 3D figures are some of the best I've seen. They're fantastic. Fun Forge has done an amazing job here. Now the first thing you're gonna do is create the world or create the map. And based on the number of players in the game will dictate how that map is designed and laid out. There's ready to go maps for two, three, and four player games. However, they have provided a way for you to create your own custom maps as long as you follow the map creation rules. Now we're set up for a two player game here and there's a lot of tokens that get put into place. There's production tokens, exploration tokens, uh, market tokens, and there's a lot of different things going on here based on the number of players again and the different types of terrain. Now each player gets to pick a civilization and there are five different civilizations to choose from. Each civilization has a set of cards and these cards are your civilization cards, your cultural policy cards, you have a warlord card, and you have 10 units and these, like I said before, you can have 3D figures or you have the tokens to represent these. And you have 10 of them and you have a main warlord, you have nine troops and you have two explorers. And then you also have two outposts that you can use throughout the game. All right, you're gonna grab your 15 civilization cards and you're gonna shuffle those up. And these are basically the start of your civilization and all the possible things you can do. You're gonna create a grid or a tableau in front of you of nine cards. So you have three rows and three columns. Then the rest of your civilization cards go off to the side as this is gonna be your main deck that you'll be drawing from throughout the game. Then take your cultural policy deck that goes off to the side as well and your warlord card. All these warlords have a unique power to their civilization. Then all your tokens go into your starting position. You have your warlord, your troops, and your explorers. And then off to the side, you'll put your outpost tokens for later use. Now there's a few other cards to make note of here. You have the development deck, and this is basically spans over eras. So you've got one, two, and three, and as you move through the eras, the more advanced the cards get. And these are gonna be cards, again, you're gonna be acquiring, to do your deck building and basically build up your deck and make your civilization more powerful. The neat thing here is that in most deck builders, when you acquire cards, they go to your discard. Well, not in this game. So you can plan ahead and get certain cards and put them at the top of your deck so you know what's coming next. Also, you have basic buildings you can acquire. You have workshops, you have archery ranges and laboratories. All of these cards, again, get put into your civilization deck for later use. So at the start of your turn, the first thing you're gonna do is activate your city. So what does that mean? Well, you're gonna look at your tableau and you're gonna be able to activate a row and a column. And the way you show this is by just slightly turning your card like a 45 to indicate what is being used. And this is where you'll activate the text on the card or you'll collect resources, whatever the cards call for. And the basic resources you're looking for here are production resources, uh, military resources, and science resources. Production basically allows you to build more buildings. Then science is all about acquiring those knowledge cards. Knowledge cards are really slick because they actually add to your powers as you deal them out into your tableau. Uh, they're not just part of the regular row. Uh, the next card goes on top and it just augments the abilities of that turn or that row that you activate. And then you have combat or military. And this allows you to move your troops and conquer different provinces or just move your explorers into the different areas or provinces along the map. 
Now there's a couple other resources worth mentioning here. You have gold and you have cultural resources. Cultural resources are slick because they allow you to tap into those cultural policy cards which give you lots of different abilities throughout the game. And gold allows you to basically buy into other resources that maybe you don't have at the time. Now, after you acquire all these resources, and as long as you have resources to do so, you can keep taking actions. And there are seven possible actions to utilize here, and there's a lot of depth in this game. So I'll just try to give you a brief overview of how each of these work, but suffice to say, there's just a lot going on. The first thing you can do is to acquire development cards or building cards. And again, based on the resources you have, will dictate which ones you may purchase. And this is a deck builder again, and what you're gonna do is place those on top of your civilization deck, not in your discard pile. And the thing here is that if you're clever, right, and you really pay attention to what cards you're pulling in, you're gonna be ready and set up to build out your tableau the next time you refresh your city. Now, if you acquire a wonder card, what you're gonna do is you have to pay the initial cost in the bottom left corner, and this gets put off to the side until you can pay the rest. It doesn't go on the top of your civilization deck yet. But even on that turn, if you have enough production in order to complete this wonder, you can do that. And if you do, you activate the card immediately, you get what it says, like in this one, you're in the Taj Mahal, you're gonna gain, um, when built, two gold. So what's cool with this one is that once you've completed the building of this card, you're going to grab the corresponding token and you'll put it in one of your provinces and the card will then go to the top of your civilization deck, but not until you pay the total cost. Another action you might do, like we touched on before, is develop those cultural policy cards. Now, as you do each one of these, it's gonna cost you a little bit more each time you do one, but they're going to add greatly to your civilization and the different abilities and powers that you possess. Now, obviously, as you build and expand your civilization, you're going to go conquest. And this is another thing you're going to do a conquest on a province. And based on the province, there are some different things going on. But the short of it is that you have to either meet or beat what is in that province. So each of the terrain tiles has their own value, like even the mountain range ranges. It's more difficult to take over Mount Range because it's already at a base three. And depending on who's there or what's there will increase that value. So you may have to move three to five different uh, combat units in there to take over that province. So it's just going to vary greatly based on the province you're moving into. For instance here, it's only gonna cost you a total of three military units to take on or to conquest this spot. And what's interesting is that you're going to acquire these tokens once you do, and you're going to put them over in front of you. And the Barbarian token in particular, uh, you look at the back and it's going to give you, either this one in particular gives you science or it's going to give you a uh, coin and you pick which one. Um, but you're going to hold on to the token so you know in case there's any special Barbarian things that happen, however many Barbarian, barbarian tokens you acquired. And then you have your production tokens, which you can also stockpile and use to help in building buildings later or now or whenever you want to use them. And you're going to take these over to build your kingdom. Now, every time you move from a province to another to conquest, then you always have to leave a troop or your warlord or someone of your particular civilization there. So you start to get pretty thin. And that's another thing in this game is that it does encourage you to move out. Obviously, it's civilization. You're trying to grow and be bigger and more powerful. But it's really easy to get super thin and too thinned out. Other military things you might do is military maneuvers. So if you have a military unit that you want to move throughout your provinces, so as long as you have a connected province, you can move that military unit to whichever one you want uh, for that resource. So it doesn't matter how far away it is. As long as you have a straight line of provinces connected, you can move that military unit to that spot. So let's take a look at outposts. So that's another option you might perform, is if you have three military units, uh, it can be warlord, any combination, um, troop, warlord, whatever. If you have three in a spot, you can replace them with an outpost, which still allows you to have three 
in that particular area. But it's important to note that these outposts, you only have two of them for the entire game. So you definitely want to use them wisely. Now let's take a look at explorers. Now remember, it's important to note that all these things you're doing, you're spending resources for. So for explorers, we're gonna have to spend military to move them across the world or the map. And as you move them into spots, either be it uh, a province that's been occupied, it doesn't matter, but you can move them there freely and they get to either choose a production token or a market token. Um, but they can only do one or the other. And there are, on the markets, you can only have one of each type market anyway. So going after those production tokens are pretty important because you can stockpile those again for building later with. And then after you've finished with all the actions, you're gonna perform this turn, then you're going to replenish your city. You're gonna take all the cards that you activated this turn in your tableau, collect them and put them into your discard pile. And then you're going to replenish your tableau by going left to right, top to bottom, putting each card into place. Now, again, if you get a knowledge card, that card goes down and then the next card goes on top of it. So if you don't have enough cards, obviously, in your civilization deck to replenish, then you're gonna take your discard pile, shuffle it up, and start fresh that way. And then you're gonna replenish the display. So the development cards, if you were able to acquire any, the gaps that are there will get filled in and everything will move down. But if you did not acquire any cards, then the furthest card on the right will get put off into the discard pile and everything moves down and a new card comes out. Now, it's a little bit different for two players versus three to four, but suffice to say it works pretty much the same way. Then the end of the game is triggered once the last card from the development deck comes into the display area, and then it's all about victory points. So for every knowledge card you have, you get a point. Then for every cultural uh, policy card that you've, you've developed, you get two points. And for every wonder you've developed, you get two points. And then for every province you control, you get one point. And then for each of these four categories, whoever has the most of each, if you have the most knowledge, then you get three additional points. And whoever has the most wins the game. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this is a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. I mean, we have a lot of cards here that don't have artwork yet, so they're very much prototype. And, you know, again, we have got a lot of figures that are part of the deluxe version versus the tokens, which are part of the basic version. Please keep that in mind. And the game has a lot of depth to it. I mean, we did a brief overview here of how things kind of work. I would encourage you to go look at the rule book and take a look at how deep this game does go. But even with that said, with how deep the game is, I still feel like this is gonna be one of the more accessible um, civilization type games. I think I could get more folks into this one, into some of the heavier Civ games, and I'm excited to have more people try it out. So if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.